Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, has there ever been a time when you slipped up and let one of those naughty words fly? <laughs> let us know down in the comments. So let's take a look at the pens. All right, so these are the pens that I've been using this week. From right to left, we have a pen that I have had to rename, because uh, apparently I named it incorrectly during my video. This is actually a Visconti Gold Point Number no. 1, made from the same material as the Visconti Opera Elements Air, but we'll get into that. Uh, Senator Silver Fox, air quotes, Lamy 2000, sorry, Lamy Safari, Lamy 99 slash 36, Astura 82, Geha 714, Geha 722, and a Columbus 65. And... Did I put Private Reserve Tanzanite in any of these Italian pens? Well, stay tuned and we'll find out. All right, so last week I had several videos, or two videos, where I talked about uh, how excited I was to finally have the Visconti Opera Elements Air. And then I got some comments that, ah, Mr. Squirrel, I don't think so. So let's just find out. Luckily, it came with the original packaging. So Visconti. I didn't show this in the second video because um, I'd already put it away in the basement, but I went and dug it out after all these comments. El Visconti. So far, no labels. Open it. We've got more Visconti stuff. We've got a, you know, the celluloid, cell, cellophane packaging. Yes, I know I'm hiding like the punchline. Uh, literature that I never showed in the video. All kinds of literature. Yeah, literature. And then we get the card that came with it. Okay. So, apparently, it is a gold point number one. Gold and two tones. Made out of acroloid, whatever that is. Well, darn. Oh, and it's 154 out of 365. So, apparently, this was a limited edition. Let's see. 154 out of 365. So, I guess my jokes about this uh, being a Visconti Opera Elements Air, only it's very polluted air, I can no longer tell those jokes because it's a Visconti Gold Point number one. So, uh, yeah, not a very exciting name. I like the Opera Elements Air, and I will probably continue to call it that, but now we know the truth. Which doesn't take away from my enjoyment of the pen, because I still love the pen. I just am really sad that it's no longer an Opera Elements Air, because, uh, uh, you know, you teach atomic theory and you talk about uh, Aristotle's elements, you know, earth, fire, water, air, earth, fire, water, air, and something else, ether or something. <clears throat> he had five elements, anyway. So, how does it write? So, the Visconti. Gold point number one. Why, oh why, did you have to be called a gold point number one? If you're some kind of a limited edition, shouldn't you get some kind of limited edition name that's all like, whoa, I want that pen. Oh wait, I did want this pen, so. Whoops. So this is Colorverse Jupiter Flyby, which is a fun ink. Uh, I had one commenter tell me that I should be using SBRE Brown, but I don't own any, so I'm not going to. And we'll give it a little swatch. Uh, as I demonstrated during the eventual review that I did, um, this pen writes kind of on par with the Visconti Homo Sapiens, but uh, Definitely a different nib. This one has a gold nib rather than a palladium nib, for example. And I got to thinking, I wonder if the Opera Elements was a 14 carat and this is an 18 carat. 
I don't actually know the answer to that question, so who knows? Maybe I've got more gold there. Woo. My next pen is the lovely, as I've named it, <laughs> Senator Silver Fox. Because uh, I don't know model names of Senator Penn, so it's a silver fox because it's silver and it's kind of foxy. And as somebody pointed out, I could do uh, political comedy with my Senator Pens, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, people don't seem to appreciate my political comments when I make them. Oops, Fox does not start with a C. <laughs> Silver Fox, there we go. And it has a fine nib. And this pen is full of Pelican. 4001 Royal Blue This is just a good daily writer type of pen the kind of pen you just you don't sing rapturous phrases about you just sit down and write with it and after you're done your writing you set it down and later on you think wait what pen did I use for that because it's so good at its job it just disappears into your hand On that note, this week I was going to ink up the Lamy 2000 because I do miss writing with it. And uh, realized I'd already inked up a different pen with black ink. So uh, the Lamy 2000 gets a break for another week or two. But I think you'll be seeing it again soon because I miss writing with it. In fact, it may even, it normally takes summers off while I write with other pens. But I think this summer you might be seeing the Lamy 2000 for a while because I have really missed using it. My next pen is inked with a uh, one of Noodler's bulletproof inks. I'm using this for the moment to address envelopes and such to pen pals and bills and so on. This is a Lamy Safari. It's a coral edition, if you're into that kind of thing. This is one of those pens that was in my pile to uh, sell or give away. And... Uh, and then I was looking at that Noodler's Fox, which is what this is, and realized that, okay, what's a good pen to put that in? I need one that holds a good seal, because it does tend to dry out, and I need one with a fine nib, because it tends to feather, and... Oh! So maybe there's a use for this, which is one of the reasons why I have been thinking about selling some of these pens, but haven't actually made any steps toward it, because I want to make sure I actually want to sell them. I may be keeping this one after all. This is kind of reminding me, uh, I had a student show up at school one day all excited about a new pair of shoes and it has fox fur on it. And I was just like, fox? That's kind of weird for a shoe and kind of weird to be for a teenager to show up with real fur anyway in this day and age. And, oh yeah, it's Fox! And I'm like, okay, how is how are they spelling Fox? <laughs> and they're spelling Fox as F-A-U-X. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, kid. That is not Fox fur. <laughs> so, uh, I think I disappointed somebody, but, you know, seriously... It's the 21st century. I know people still buy furs, but uh, they're just not the thing. And for shoes? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Fox is spelled F-O-X. <laughs> so, it amused me in a cruel sort of way. Alright. <laughs> I am a bastard sometimes. <laughs> This is a Lamy 99 slash 36 pen. I would say one of the ancestors of my beloved Lamy 2000. So even though the top 2000 isn't inked up this week, I'm getting my uh, kick anyway. So this is a Lamy 99 slash 36 oblique fine. Uh, you don't see too many of those. And then the ink in it is Colorverse. Pale blue dot. Oh, 
Uh, somebody mentioned about how they haven't seen the pale part of this ink before last week. Uh, I, I filmed last week's pens in use in, uh, that was pretty early afternoon when I filmed that one. Uh, this one, it's late afternoon. It's a little after six as I filmed this. Um, so the sun is going down, but, uh, I don't know if they were seeing the pale part because there was more daylight or was it because, uh, I'd put it in this pen, which I think shows off this ink very nicely. Usually fines are not the pen you pick for uh, showing off an ink, but some inks work well in fines, so, uh, yeah, enjoying that. Uh, to appease my Italian fans, I have a vintage Italian pen here. This is an Astura 88, and you can see it has a really nice finish. Let's keep my fingers under it, because apparently... Uh, this is one of the reasons I don't like this camera. There are things about it I can lock the settings, and other things I cannot. And apparently it has auto exposure, but I've been able to fix the white balance problem. And I've been able to get it to do better with auto exposure. Not adjust, okay, that's not underexposed, that's just a dark area of the cap. I, I'm looking at the camera going, wait a second, but it actually is like that. As I look down. So, uh, yeah, just a beautiful finish. That's a button filler. And let's see how it writes. Did I even show you the cap or did I get too excited there? I don't remember. So, it's a very attractive pen. So, this is an Astura. Don't blame the pen for that little warble there. I was uh, holding it at a weird angle. So, this is an Astura 82. I don't know a nib size. I guess I don't much care. The nib is... Oh, it doesn't say. There's a 2 on it, if that means anything. Probably the nib size. Uh, Astura 82. And then the ink in it is Califolio. Noir. I don't know. Do, do, do Italian inks... Or, sorry, Italian pens and French inks get along? I guess we'll find out. I mean, Italian pens seem to get along with uh, American inks, so why not with French inks? So, I don't... I like the brand Califolio. I just don't like that particular <laughs> example of the brand because it's just... Um, it's just not a very nice black. I would rather use Parker Black or Pelican Black or Lamy Black or even pilot black um so i am this is going to be my black ink till i darn well run out of this bottle uh, i had to eyedropper this next one this is a geha 714 has a steno nib um i'm trying to think if i have any geha cartridge oh i do so geha cartridge is different from your standard cartridge so I had to refill the cartridge that's in it with an eyedropper um, come on come on this is the end that's in the pen this is a standard international end so uh, my understanding is cartridges used to be more proprietary until all these companies started to buy each other out and then some standardization happened um, which I guess is good. Some companies still do their own things, like Schaefer, um, uh, Cross, Parker. Aurora and Parker actually do the same thing. The Japanese brands are all different, but most pens that you buy just use a standard international cartridge or converter. You know, that, uh, Visconti that I showed you earlier would be a standard international converter, although it has a special Visconti converter in it that's a little classier uh, and screws in, I could stick a regular standard international converter in it with no problem. All right, so this is a steno nib, which would mean stenography. Kind of very 70s looking coloring to this pen. So this is a Geha 714. Oops. Steno, 
And the ink in it is Hiroshi Shizuku. Yuyake. I just emptied this out of another pen. Um, I want to say a Delta pen. I won't swear to that though. And I just decided, you know, I'm enjoying this ink, so let's put it in a different pen. Plus the bottle is uh, halfway empty, so <laughs> why not? My next pen, maybe we'll give ourselves a little room here before I'm writing off screen. My next pen is another Geha. I just felt like, uh, you know, I grabbed, I had this pen in mind. And then I saw this one laying beside it like, uh, okay, talk me into it. So this is a Geha 722, a piston filling pen, has an oblique broad nib. Come on, there we go. And I have not used very much of this ink, but I was surprised by how much ink this pen took. <laughs> um... And I don't know why, I like the color. So I think you'll be seeing more of it. So this is Hiroshi Suzuku, and the name of it is Murasaki Shikabu. Let's put that on a new line. So just a very nice purple ink and uh, kind of a fun nib. I've had, uh, I want to say I've had mostly purple inks in this pen. I don't know why. I, I know uh, when I did its first impression was before I got on this uh, Parker Quink washable blue fixation. <laughs> so I was using what? Uh, I don't know. Some sailor ink that's uh, wisteria colored. And... Uh, yeah, now this one, I like it. And finally, we let's come back to Italy for another. So what are my nationalities here? I just realized this has been all either Italy or Germany tonight. That's, uh, that's kind of wild. All right, so this is another Italian pen. This is kind of a clone of the Aurora 88, except it's a screw cap, not a slip cap. But the nib is very reminiscent, and if you could see the ink windows they're very reminiscent uh, but this is a columbus 65. Uh, now christopher christopher columbus is a pretty horrible guy so uh one hopes that this is not named after that guy but then again we have parts here in the united states that are named after him Eroshizuku, whoops, a Z U K U Ama Iro. Ama Iro, I'm a hero. I don't know. I think I'm pretty sure that means sky blue, but I you know won't swear to that. But with spring here, I thought Let's do a nice springy colored ink. Heck, I guess I've done two spring colored inks. Because this would be kind of a flowers are coming out like crocuses or something. I'm pretty sure Murasaki Shikabu does not mean crocus. That's uh, I don't, I don't know, maybe they have crocuses in Japan. I guess I don't know. Okay, so it's not a totally uh, uh, Italian and German video. Because we have some Japanese inks. We have a French ink. We have Colorverse South Korean. I'm 100% certain it's not North Korean. Uh, but it could be Taiwan, Taiwanese. I'm not 100% sure where they're based. And Lu Noodler's, his pens are kind of Indian. But uh, I know he gets, he makes the inks actually at his home. Because he has a shop behind his house. So, yeah. Well, I guess we're fairly international if we look beyond the pens. 
So those are the inks that I've been using through this week. Um, so let's address some controversy and some other topics. All right, so those are the pens and inks that I've been using throughout this week. So I wanted to start with the big daddy of all the uh, topics for this week. Uh, so earlier this week, I did a review of the uh, Visconti... Now let's try and see if I remember the new name. The Visconti Opera Gold Point Number 1. Except I called it an Opera Elements Air. But anyway, um, so I discovered when I went to edit it all together Tuesday night that, oh, you don't have any writing sample footage, which was an awkward moment. Uh, I had the me talking part that I filmed with the laptop that's over there running the microphone, but I didn't have the... Uh, the actual writing samples. You got a lot of from the side view of me writing with the pen and then looking up and occasionally looking over at the ca other camera. And, uh, but not the writing sample to go with it. And I decided, you know what? Because I could tell I was enthusiastic. Like, I was really excited about it when I filmed this a couple of months ago. And I thought, you know what? I am just going to upload that footage anyway and just call it bonus footage so nobody's shocked or wonders, whoa, where's the pen? <laughs> and uh, uh, I was very happy with it. And uh, then I edited together the review and uh, set that to upload on uh, Wednesday and uh, all was good. And then Wednesday I get home from, was it Wednesday? Or did I check comments Monday, Tuesday morning? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. I... Yeah, I don't know. When I did all this stuff, I get confused. Anyway, the important thing is, I didn't know until I read one of the comments that I used a naughty word at the end. Because I forget what I did because I was so surprised by the word I used. that. Uh, but I did something and I and I bumble around and I say, oh, woohoo, it. Nobody's ever going to see this anyway. <laughs> Which is true. I, I will, when I do raw footage, I'll sometimes make editorial comments. So as an editor or whatever, I remember that, oh yeah, I want to do that. Or, you know, I want to change that. Or I want to make sure I make this edit when I do it. So, you know, I, I talk to myself or, uh, you know, I, I'll edit out my throat clearing or those kind of things too. So, you know, I, 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 I leave myself somewhat more uh, raw than perhaps a more polished reviewer might. But, uh, you know, whatever. It's, it's who I am. But uh, usually I'm not that raw and unpolished. So uh, I saw that I'd used that word and this person talks about how they laughed out loud. I'm like, what? And uh, I didn't find it till the very end that I said, the, you know, all of that. So yeah, I probably should have watched the whole raw footage through. I just picked out bits and pieces to make sure I didn't do something stupid or have a long gap in the middle or something like that. And, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I apologize. I did not mean to do that. I, that is something I try not to publish here. I have no problem with swearing. Uh, I will swear. If you hear me swear, it's intentional normally. Or I've just really hurt myself and gotten surprised and just grabbed, you know, a hot piece of lab equipment like, oh, woohoo! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I apologize because that is not something I, I want to do. I don't want to be the fountain pen channel that swears. But I decided not to take it down because, uh, you know, there it is. It, the cat's out of the bag. Squirrel knows some words. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know... Uh, after a, uh, okay, try that again. After uploading that footage, I uh, then went on because I'm like, oh yeah, I still got to film this video. So I refilmed the whole writing sample part with the camera that you can't see that's, you know, this camera. Uh, got the writing sample, got the laptop over there and got the whole thing. And, uh, you know, I, it didn't have the raw enthusiasm of the first footage. I, I would have been very, I think I would have been very happy with how that turned out because I would have edited out that unfortunate word. Uh, but the other reason is I, w I was much more enthusiastic. You know, once you've had something for a while, that enthusiasm dies off no matter how much you love it. I mean, uh, do I still love my Nakaya Decapod twist? Yes. In fact, uh, you almost got to see it tonight. 
Uh, but when I was inking pens up this week, I grabbed a, a Geha, and I, you know, the Decapod Twist was going to be the other one, but then I looked at the Geha laying beside it, I'm like, ooh, I want you. So uh, we got two Gehas tonight instead of a Nakaya. But anyway, um, yeah, the, the romance dies down, but it doesn't disappear. I, I kind of look at it as love, where you love somebody, and uh, yeah, when you first meet them, you're like, oh, so hot! So wonderful, I could just listen to you talk for hours. And then as you get to know him, you start to realize, oh gosh, I wish you wouldn't pick your nose. Oh, stop farting in public. And, you know, those kinds of things. And, and you start to see their faults. And you get a more uh, holistic view of them. And yet at the same time, you still love them. The love is uh, for deeper things. You realize that, wow, I love how we can spend hours talking, analyzing all the different political factions in Frank Herbert's Dune novels, for example. Um, just throwing that one out there. <laughs> um, but you, you know what I mean. You find deeper things in your relationship, and it makes it more long-lasting. You know, my parents have been married for over 50 years. I'm, I don't think they're still on the, oh my gosh, you're so hot stage. Uh, but uh, something has kept them together for this long. And same with my grandparents. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's kind of how I think it gets with pens. And sometimes you divorce. And I, I do plan a video on that one of these days here. Uh, I, you heard some thoughts on the Lamy Safari during this video on that note. So, uh, yeah. I uh, When summer gets here, that's one of those things that I just can't deal with right now during school. I, I need summer break to be here to deal with that side of things. But we'll get there. So uh, in other exciting news, um, yeah, you did see why I edit. I may not be a heavy editor, but I do edit. Um, I was a little sad. I, I put a link down below to uh, in the video description to, to Stephen Brown's video of the Visconti Opera Elements. I think he has a fire. It looked red in the video. But anyway, the important thing is that's the one that turned me on to this finish. Uh, and then I was immediately turned off because the red and white looked like a candy cane. Very expensive candy cane, but a candy cane. But I, I fell for the uh, the air finish and never bought it. And yeah, years later, I finally found one. Very excited till I published a video on it. And it turns out, yeah, it's not a Visconti Opera Elements Air. It's a, what the heck is it, gold point something or other. Anyway, um, so the name was a little bit of a letdown. And, you know, if I'd been more aware or perhaps less excited during my initial first impression, I might have noticed that card was actually giving the model name and number of the pen instead of just, oh, more stuff. Ha ha ha. So uh, now I know. But I guess it is pretty special, even if the name isn't quite as evocative. But uh, I do enjoy the pen very much. That does not change. You know, they talk about a rose by another name. Well... Is, is it because it's called a rose or is it because uh, the association with that word? You know, who knows? But I, I still love that pen. And uh, I'm sure you'll be seeing it from time to time like you do some of my other nice pens. Um, I'll just mention one other thing. I don't have anything too controversial tonight. Uh, but I was reading a study earlier this week about following your passions. And the whole idea of encouraging people, especially kids, to follow their passions. And that might actually be a mistake. So I've been sitting on some driving footage. I have wanted... Well, it, it, it's driving footage getting close to Minot, North Dakota. And if you paid attention last fall, I did a Pens in Use where the whole commentary basically got edited out. I went on a hardcore rant about some events that happened in Minot, North Dakota last fall. Uh, basically, Minot, North Dakota flew the uh, rainbow flag at City Hall for, I don't know if it was a day or a week, but whatever. And uh, holy buckets, some people came unglued at the city council meeting. And wow, <laughs> is all I can say. And it's all up there. Um, one of the city councilors, 
made a name for herself because she's a lesbian and finally told off one of the people and oh my god i was seeing red uh, because this guy was so awful to them and uh anyway uh i cut that out and i just said to myself that was another one you know where i edited and so on i just said you know this is one for a driving video and then i have not been able to bring myself to upload it because the or make it the language and so on in that video and the things some of these people say are just so awful i don't know that i want it on my channel you know there have been times i've talked about putting the driving videos on a different channel but then everybody's no 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 keep it here because we want to see it all and yeah okay i but then i see something like that and yeah I don't want that on this channel. Uh, it, it's so awful. So uh, anyway, I, I've been kind of stalled there ever since. Well, now I think I have something interesting to talk about that I can be passionate about and won't be so... I don't even know the word I want. Um, I, I just, I, I can't... I don't want that kind of bigotry on this channel, even if I'm condemning it. So anyway, I, uh, th th that's an example of where I would want to spin off a, onto a different channel because, oh my God. So, uh, we'll see. I, I may do that on a different channel. I, you know, I may create one. If, if I ever get to that point, I'll announce it here. Uh, and I'm going to throw this out there as an extra, just as a surprise. I have been experimenting a little on Vimeo. Um, it goes back to several years ago when uh, two different things happened. First of all, Stephen Brown's channel was temporarily taken down by YouTube. Somebody, probably somebody jealous, reported him or for something, and they just like, woohoo, and they took him down. And, you know, he, he spent a weekend of serious hardcore stress trying to deal with that. And eventually they restored it. Because, I mean, Stephen Brown, what the, there's nothing he does that's controversial. Uh, he, he's even less controversial than me because he, he's smarter about sharing what he thinks about things. But uh, anyway, he uh, I it was suggested to him that he should have somewhere else for his videos. And, you know, do you have a backup copy of them? And he's like, no, I don't have a backup copy of anything. So I've been uh, slowly making a backup copy of my videos on Vimeo. Um, now Vimeo is a paid service, so I've been paying a little bit each month for that. And, uh, you know, I don't make any money off of Vimeo, so it's not like I'm trying to grow the audience there. But, you know, it's, it's just a backup. If something ever happens to YouTube, like, you know, I shudder to think what might have happened if I would have uploaded my comments on the, <laughs> on the, the Minot City Council meeting. So, uh. Yeah, it's, it's another option. I kind of think it'd be fun to send Vimeo in a different direction, do more arty type videos, but then again, you need the time. And during school, I don't always have the time for stuff like that. So we'll just have to see. But uh, for now, it's there. And uh, I don't know if you want to take a look at it. They, they don't run advertising on Vimeo, so you, you have that. But you don't, also don't have very many videos from me there yet. Um, but anyway, I... Uh, I think I'll close it off there. So look forward to driving video. I want to, I bet I read the study. I'm now rereading it and uh, I've been writing notes on it. And then I want to edit together a script and then I will probably record the video. Uh, it's not going to be one of those heavily footnoted videos because it's basically me talking about one study. And uh, I do have another article about Douglas Adams. Strangely, by coincidence, I ran into a Douglas Adams article where he talks about the same topic and his personal experience with it. So uh, I think it'll be interesting. But then again, I'm a teacher and stuff like that interests me. So anyway, <laughs> I want to thank you for watching, for putting up with my swearing. <laughs> and... Uh, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. Even if I apparently let off one F-bomb in, in the years I've had this channel since 2007. Also, look forward, sorry, meant to mention this earlier, look forward to a video 
next week where I finally do the two-year test on Platinum's slip and seal mechanism for the 3776. And I would invite you to leave a comment down below, especially if it's swearing related. Have you ever just let one fly, whether by accident or just totally oblivious that you just done that? And uh, so let us know down in the comments that some of those stories can be funny. So when a little distance is applied and you're no longer so mortified. <laughs> so um, anyway, I want to thank you for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.